Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the WCW Worldwide Review Series for the 18th of April of uh, 1992, easy for me to say, I almost said 2002, that would have worked, would be nice if WCW was still around, but not so much. Anyway, um, the Worldwide Series is our latest series, and if you're new here, we've got over 1,300 videos for you to check out in a variety of topics. Would love to be of service to you in that way. In any event, um, this is a little while before the Wrestle War pay per view coming up in May, uh, which again is the Stinger Squadron Dangerous Alliance culmination. But here uh, we kind of got uh, a little bit more, I, I don't know that I'd say chaos, but certainly. Uh, challenges for the worldwide brand. Um, Jesse Ventura has become mainly a mainstay on that brand. Uh, Tony Schiavone being on worldwide predominantly and Jim Ross being on the WCW Saturday Night brand. I've never really understood different announcers, different shows. Some people do. I don't necessarily, but it's there. Uh, and again, this is the one-hour show, which I do I've forgotten how easy it is to watch one-hour wrestling shows, um, and I prefer them. Um, 90 minutes for me is a sweet spot. The old Memphis TV room is a reminder of that, but after watching so many hour-and-a-half WCW Saturday nights recently for the channel, it reminds me there was a major difference in pacing between a 90-minute show a two-hour show, and an hour show. Anyway, Bubba Howard against Rick Steiner is your open here. Uh, Bubba Howard I don't remember seeing much of before and now, so maybe he's a relatively new enhancement talent. Steiner, though, powers him around, punches, kicks, Steiner lines, and the like. Rick Steiner in a singles match here kind of perplexes me in the sense that, you know, he's a tag team guy. Why do you need him to fill the role of a uh, enhancement talent here, uh, or a uh, singles talent here, and again, he hits the, the Steiner line, and off we go into the wild blue yonder of his victory. Good enough, but still confusing to me why one of the top tag guys at the time is doing a singles match. Also, there is a brutal-looking belly-to-belly um, -belly suplex off the top from Steiner that just leads him to be super powerful, but not good if you're the enhancement talent for sure. Uh, and that closes that off. We move to uh, the WCW This Week kind of segment. Uh, Flying Brian Coleman and Tom Zink are going to go at it at Wrestle War 92. And they are former tag team partners, former tag team, I think, U.S. tag team champions. Uh, and uh, Coleman kind of lets it be known that uh, we're, we were friends, we were tag team partners, we are now going to be enemies. I actually liked the build to this when I when I did the WCW Saturday Night review series. I enjoyed it just from the standpoint of it was it was well done, it was concise, it was easy, and that's that. Then we move into um, Cactus Jack having another enhancement talent match. I did not know Cactus was here as much during the earlier part of 92. His uh, Beach Blast run uh, it's pretty cool. The Enhancement Talent does a nice flip bump for his uh, uh, clothesline, and Cactus hits a leg drop. I actually would love to see more of Cactus Jack in World Class. Less of that available than I would have liked because World Class ended in 88, um, and I think his main run there might have overlapped a little bit. But anyway, Cactus uh, pretty well... Um, you know, does some does some basic stuff. Sends a guy to the outside, the dive to the outside with the uh, elbow off the apron, and then Cactus gets the win with a DDT kind of double underhook DDT style move. Vader continues to threaten Sting. Vader continues to say he's going to take Sting out once and for all. Harley Race endorses this and promises that in fact. Sting will be a guy of note. Austin and Zabisco representing the Dangerous Alliance in an enhancement talent match here. Austin still on and off your television champion during this time period. I 
really enjoy this time in Austin's career just because it's it's unique, it's different, and he is uh, a ping pong ball bouncing all over the ring for anybody who he needs to. Um, obviously, the cutoffs for the enhancement match are here. The Bisco wears him down, and Austin comes in and hits his uh, signature moves and just basically starts work. He gets up in the face of the other enhancement talent, goes at him pretty aggressively without uh, getting lost in the process. Winners, obviously, in an enhancement talent scenario, uh, a, a uh, uh, happy, dangerous alliance tandem. Um, there is a... You're uh, a Jap Japanese contingent coming over. Uh, Fujinami, one of them, to face the Steiner Brothers for tag team titles. Handily, they got away with this, but basically said that the uh, tag team championships were going to be held by Americans, pretty much, and that there were issues with Japan. I know we have had issues with Japan in 1992, but according to the Steiners, we do. Um, and that, that just strikes me as goofy. Dusty Rhodes is plugging the upcoming, in a couple of weeks, uh, Nintendo Power challenge series so nintendo must have been a sponsor at the time jt southern with guitar uh i guess getting ready for van hammer here uh as he is um facing off against an enhancement talent a couple of kicks under the under the chin and some basic stuff uh stepping on the man and uh um drawing the enhancement talent match out longer than it should be but he hits a finish and one two three there we go z-man is coming up jesse ventura on the set of a hollywood performance scenario there pretty impressive uh he, he also interviews jt southern jt southern makes fun of van hammer says he has no skills makes fun of the Freebirds. says they have no singing skills uh basically puts himself over as Battle of the Rock Stars with Van Hammer, which I don't know that that's the best way to market this, but if you've hired the guy, you might as well market it somehow. Uh, then we move on to the Z-Man in his match here. Um, and obviously he is a guy who, for the most part, is, you know, there and uh, enjoyable enough. Um, you know, some, some shoulder tackles or basic stuff. Uh, from Terry Taylor, his opponent. That is off the heels of the run-in on Marcus Bagwell in previous weeks. Taylor takes a leaping bump on the, the to the outside of the ring. Taylor seems to be going more the singles heel route at the time, although still teaming with Greg Valentine. Obviously, Valentine attacking um, Z-Man Zink when uh, Taylor was in the ring with him last. They battle over arm bars, arm locks, and the like, hammer locks, and basic stuff here. Uh, Zink is not the least bit impressed with any of this and doesn't really seem to care one way or the other, to be completely honest. Um, you know, it's tie-ups and basics here. Uh, Zink does the rowboat on the arm, and then you see Taylor managing a, um, uh, shot to the, to the, uh, guardrail, and basically, uh, rolls him up and gets a, Gets a, gets a one count there. Zink tied up in the ropes. Taylor tries to go to town on the both the knee and the uh, hamstrings of Zink. Zink fights back. Very basic match. It probably would have been a major match, uh, I don't know, five to seven years before. Here it just feels like filler, but a good main event nonetheless. Zink hits a super kick, and that brings out Greg Valentine. Valentine gets super kicked off the apron for his trouble. So Valentine and Taylor still in uh, good coercion as a tandem here. And some cheating leads to um, the, the, with the trip of the leg from Valentine, Taylor gets the victory. One, two, three, there we go. Uh, more Wrestle War report and uh, Stinger Squadron is hyped for the Dangerous Alliance in the War Games. One of the best War Games ever. But we close on that note and we'll be back with more right after this.